Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever Wednesday. On today's episode, we're going to do a little E6010 stick welding in the horizontal position. So stick with me. Here we go. Okay, before we get started today, I just want to take a minute to remind you all that we do sell these Weld Fever caps and Weld Fever sticker on our store. That's weldfever.com and then just click the store icon right in the middle. Right now, since we've just begun Well Fever Wednesday, we're going to have a special on these. $14.99 gets you one of these. It's a little bit of a sale discount price over what uh, we normally sell them for. Just make sure to visit and click on this and put in the promo code WEDNESDAY. WEDNESDAY is the promo code for this and we will send this to you for $14.99. That's the special sale price and we'll include a free sticker. But if you want stickers by themselves, you can also purchase those online as well. Okay, so what we have here is a cruciform that we're going to go ahead and weld on today. And you can see this one's almost completely done. And the reason why I chose this one is because I really want to show you how to pad up from the bottom up a nice horizontal weld across this surface. This is probably the most challenging thing is to keep it, uh, keep it going on an upward motion to where it lays flat or perfectly perpendicular to the floor, shall we say. So that's what we're going to do there. Also, I want to take a minute to show you the electrode here. This is a Lincoln Electric electrode, and it's an E6010, and you'll notice it's a red color. Um, the color on these means absolutely nothing, okay? There are E6010s made by other manufacturers, and even by Lincoln, that are different colors, that are gray or a little bit of an off-white. Uh, there are some that are kind of yellowish in appearance, and this particular one happens to be red. Color means nothing. Don't worry about that. If you see a different color, just make sure it says E6010 here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but so long as it says E6010 here at the bottom, you're okay. Also, I want you to know that uh, the amperage range for a 1 8 inch E6010 electrode is somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, 80 to 85 to about 120-ish, give or take. Uh, all manufacturers set their own amperage ranges. For a 1 8 inch electrode, that's about right. Uh, I personally like to run these things uh, on this type of a material, somewhere between 90 and 100. Uh, other people prefer to run them a little bit less, but remember, the rule of thumb is this. The amperage is determined by the thickness of your material, okay? This is very, very thick material, and as a result, uh, a lot of penetration is required, so you're going to want to up the amperage on this one. I would probably be safe to go upwards of 100 uh, amps on this thing, but I'm not going to do it just so that you can see it. Once we get into the higher amperage range, it gets so bright that it's hard for us to actually videotape that, so I'm going to keep it low to about 95 amps. Alright, so let's get started welding. Okay, on these first two welds, it gives me an opportunity to describe what's going on here, so I'm going to go ahead and start up a little bit ahead of where I actually need to begin. And the reason for that I'm going to talk about a little later on again, but it's just to get the uh, electrode good and hot uh, before you start welding. That way uh, you don't end up with a lump of uh, filler material right at the beginning of your weld. Notice right here I'm uh, terminating the weld and I'm coming back and I'm hitting it two, three times. That is to fill it up completely at the end. Okay, let's take a look at this again. I start up a little bit before where I'm going to begin and I work my way back by long arcing. And now I do a gentle whip and pause. Now I whip out a lot. A lot of people criticize me for that, but that's just my style. I feel like I can control it and I like being able to come out and let it, let the uh, puddle solidify a little bit before I come back into it. That's just my style of welding. Some people prefer more, some people, most people prefer less. Continuing on with our welding, I'm going to go ahead and uh, now speed the process up a bit. Uh, I've increased the speed of the uh, video uh, to twice the normal speed. That way we can just go ahead and get through this a little quicker. Uh, I intend to show you the entire uh, weld, all the way from where we started to the very top of this cruciform. Uh, that way you can see it uh, in its entirety. I think that uh, probably most of you out there will benefit uh, from seeing uh, weld being placed one bead at a time all the way from the beginning through to completion and that's something I haven't really done too much of before I usually show a bead or two uh, and then just kinda 
move on. Uh, but this time we're going to go all the way to the top, completing the entire pad. Okay, so uh, the other thing I want to mention real quick that I haven't mentioned already is that uh, you'll notice that my angle when I have my electrode there is slightly uh, upward, maybe about 15 to 20 degrees up. That is simply to fight gravity. I find that the arc force helps keep the molten puddle upward and uh, doesn't allow it to sag. And that's an important aspect when you're dealing with a horizontal weld like this. Okay, I'm going to be quiet now so you can enjoy, and I've uh, provided a little bit of a musical interlude for you, so I'll see you at the end of this. Okay, so here we are. Now, all of this here was previous weld from some other thing we did, but basically from about this line all the way up to the top is what we just did right now that you you got to see in uh, fast motion. As you can see here, the objective is been taken care of, and our objective was to make sure that we built it up from the bottom to the top and having it perfectly flat, or I should say perpendicular to the floor. Uh, if the floor was your one plane, then we'd want to have this exactly at a 90 degree angle to it. So that's what we got and as you notice as I was going and I mentioned before my angle was slightly up to keep everything uh, above it going on the top. We're trying to fight gravity after all because of the position. And the only other thing I want to mention is the fact that look at how we've overlapped everything. That's very very important when you're doing padding of any kind no matter what position is that everything is overlapped. You want to overlap by at least half and more is preferable and you can see here I'm probably overlapped at least two thirds on every bead that I did. Thanks again for visiting us on another Weld Fever Wednesday. Don't forget to visit our website www.weldfever.com or on Instagram hashtag weldfever and hashtag weldfever Wednesdays. Don't forget to visit our store at weldfever.com so you can buy logo merchandise to help support the show and check with us every Wednesday for Weld Fever Wednesday. Bye bye.